What's up everybody, and welcome back to another Dota 1 replay. Yes, I have not forgotten about this game, there are still a lot of games going on, and I have decided that even as popular as Dota 2 gets, I will be going back to Dota 1 from time to time. But expect more Dota 2 replays rather than Dota 1 replays. I'm just casting this game because it has a couple interesting heroes that I want to talk about and that have been trending in the Southeast Asian scene for quite a bit. So, just to bring it all back um, to Dota 1 for a second. Dota 1 still pretty strong, pretty popular at the moment. Um, G League just got an enormous prize pool increase. I think it's 42000 for Season 3 or whatever the season in G League is. And of course, that's a Chinese exclusive tournament. And unfortunately, since they are Chinese... Um, games, we won't be able to get access to the replay until god knows when. So unfortunately for that, we're going to still have to watch the Filipino Dota scene, which of course contains a lot of high octane, high action matches with a lot of unusual, different heroes that we normally didn't see for a while in Dota 1, while it was nearing the end of its huge popularity, as just sort of going back into a niche sort of scene that is popular in the Southeast Asian and Asian communities, which of course it's not really niche when millions of people still play this game every day. So, yeah, I, you're going to have to watch this game uh, between MSI EVO GT, formerly known as XCTN, on the Sentinel side, and the Bad Burn team on the Scourge side. Now, just a little bit of background on Bad Burn. I honestly had not heard of them before uh, last month, actually. And they, I don't think they were invited to the GST last month. They are definitely invited this month because they won the GMPGL last month which was pretty competitive. A lot of the top Filipino teams are all there. And this is part of GMPGL 4.5 edition, which I do believe is actually a LAN tournament featuring all of the Filipinos' best teams. So yeah, keep that in mind. And MSI EVO GT was invited to the International 2 qualifier, so you can check out all the news covering the International 2 on um, Ghost Gamers, Join Dota, and I think a lot of the Dota commentary crew is going to be casting that as well. And I might be able to cast some of those as well, because replays are now going to be pretty active in the Dota 2 scene. So a lot more availability towards replays means that I can cast more, and that benefits everybody, especially me, and you guys too, for you who are sticking with me. But rest assured, I will still continue to cast this game. There are a lot of people who still love and watching this game because of different heroes that are not implemented in Dota 1. Heroes like Templar Assassin... Yeah, <laughs> not many more. Naga, Naga is in Dota 1. Uh, if I can find a Dirge game, Dirge is probably my favorite Dota 1 hero that's still not implemented in Dota 2 yet. So I might be bringing you some of those games. But a recent trend in the Southeast Asian Dota 1 scene is the rise of Kunkka. Now this is very odd, because we also see Kunkka not in combination with the Shao Demon, which is extremely odd. Of course, at level 1, Shao Demon Disruption always stuns for 2 seconds, or not really stuns, it removes the opponent from play for 2 seconds. Which gives Kunkka the opportunity to set up the torrent and just go in and, you know, do a lot of AoE damage with a pretty good slow. The thing about Kunkka is that, um, he eats a lot of items and his big AoE nukes are not really, you know, too reliable. If you are trying to juke the torrent, you can mostly do that, and of course the person predicts a juke where you can just sort of mind game them back and go on a straight path anyway. So there's a lot of jukes that can be played with torrent, and it's not really the most reliable setup stun. Of course, you have another stun that couples with it, then torrent becomes an extremely useful skill, because it is an AoE, and it does stun for 1.5 seconds as the hero is propelled into the air, and it goes for that 3 to 4 seconds slow. So you can see Badburn discussing the picks. They wanted a bat for their last pick. But yeah, we're going to see Kunkka being picked up by MSI Evo GT. Sorry if you're spoiled. My bad, but yeah. <laughs> I can tell you this thing. You're not going to be spoiled for Dota 1 replays because I don't think any other people... I know Doc commentates Dota 1 replays very much, but I don't know if he uh, is planning to commentate too many more Dota 1 replays. So you're just going to have to be stuck with me if you want to be... Uh, Getting the access with Dota replay. And by the way, um, I'm just sort of expanding my frontiers. I have finally started streaming. I stream mostly public Dota 2 games of me solo queuing, sometimes queuing with the DC people, um, like Hobbs and Luminous and Nebula and stuff like that. And you can find that at twitch.tv slash vbon773. It would really help me out if you follow this, follow me there, and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and all that jazz. But alright, that's enough uh, shameless self promotion. Let's get into the lanes and the heroes and the picks. So, yeah, we got. Oh, let's just pause it for now, because there mm, looks like all five Sentinel heroes are top, so I just want to introduce the players. We have Kimo TNC on the Kunkka. Uh, no, Tanko on the uh, Shadow Demon. GTYC on the Earthshaker. Uh, 
Doc on the uh, Sand King, and Doa on the Omni Knight. So, meanwhile, we have uh, Jutan on the Panda, Red Eyes on the Batrider. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling a little bit, but I've never really heard of these players. Inma on the Naga, Beabus on the Weaver, and Don on the Witch Doc. And yes, this is my first time watching a Bad Bird new play. Hopefully they can bring out some very impressive things. And just going over the synergy of the hero lamp, they have Weaver and Naga, heroes that require a pretty good amount of fire. Of course, Naga really just needs to get tank, so she can stay on Riptide and just set up people. But looks like Red Eyes might be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get disrupted. Let's see if the torrent, torrent might have been cast a little bit too early. No, it whips the Batrider. Batrider does get some of the fissure. Sand King is too far away to catch up. And looks like Batrider stacked one stack, but will that uh, turning animation and casting animation should be the death of him, maybe, maybe not, Shadow Demon's disruption will be cooling down very shortly, looks like Torrent is casting once again, but it whiffs once more, Kunkka is not letting these Torrents, and that's the problem with Kunkka at the moment, but looks like Shadow Demon might be able to get into range for the position, yes, he got the higher ground vision, so he's able to get disruption, and now the Earthshaker Fisher comes in, and good thing for Sand King, he didn't waste any mana, meanwhile, only, uh, Earthshaker and Kunkka and Shadow Demon wasted mana, so Sand King is going to be able to get to his lane, and handle all his mana problems with relative ease. So, a pretty rough start for the Batrider, but we're going to see a Panda in the mid lane. A uh, Batrider on the top lane. Looks like he just teleported back already. We're going to have a Trident of Naga, Witch Doctor, Weeper. Wow, what an unconventional Trident. I wonder if he's going to get primary fire. I guess just... I guess it's going to have to be Naga. I mean... Yeah, I, <laughs> this is just a very weird lane. Something you definitely don't see in any sort of games. Two pretty noticeable hard carries in the form of Naga and Weaver. But of course, the Southeast Asian Filipino scene do not play Naga as a hard carry. They just play her as a tank, uh, sort of get the Vanguard and get some damage at him and just be, have her be a nuisance overall. Meanwhile, Sand King is going to be laning against that Panda in the mid lane. Panda should have the advantage. He should have a more spell and room control. But if Sand King does drop the Sandstorm, Panda shouldn't really be able to kill him whatsoever. But Panda, of course, has higher starting straight damage, higher base damage. So he'll be able to control the lane with relative ease. Meanwhile, it's going to be Batrider versus Windrunner. No, Omni Knight. Oh my god, a game without a Windrunner. Jesus. What is the world coming to? And Omni Knight should get absolutely mauled by Batrider. But fortunately for Omni Knight that if he casts Repel on himself, then he will be able to escape the stacks of Stip Sticky Napalm. But he's only level 1 at the moment, so he hasn't been able to scale the Repel. He just now scales the Repel. Looks like no no action on the bot lane. And it looks like Weaver might be getting the farm. Or they split farming up. No, Weaver's going to get all the farm. And yeah, I think this is probably the smart choice. The problem with Weaver is that he's extremely mobile, extremely survivable, but if you don't really get any items on him, he becomes sort of useless in the late game. I mean, he doesn't really contribute too much to your team besides that uh, 3,000 casting range swarm that reduces armor. But other than that, he's not really too useful, he's just survivable, and he can't really scare people away from, you know, going on your towers or going on your barracks like other carry heroes can. So, meanwhile, Kunkka has skilled the Tide Mirror. It's going to provide a lot of passive harassment to the Trilight. And maybe that's one of the reasons why Kunkka has become popular. Because the Filipino scene still is very much based around the Trilight versus Trilight action. And Kunkka is pretty good at dominating Trilights with the passive harassment of the Tide Mirror. As long as the other two heroes do a nice job in terms of denying and controlling the creepy equilibrium. Because Tide Bringer, of course, does push the wave a decent amount. But fortunately, it looks like uh, the Bad Burn heroes are doing a nice job in terms of avoiding a lot of the Tidebringer splashes. And we see the Sand King smartly dropping the Sandstorm, getting some passive rest into the Panda, but you can see Panda is actually out CSing the Sand King. And looks like Swarm is casted. Fissure is going to be dropped once as well. Kunkka is in a lot of trouble. Looks like a bad... or Don, the Witch Doctor, does die, but looks like Kunkka is going to be in a lot of trouble. The attack from the Weaver is going to manage to pick up a kill, but Naga is going to have to run for her life. A couple more hits. No, she turns around. She wants to get another kill. She doesn't have enough mana. She catches the Riptide on the Shadow Demon. She's going to try to sacrifice her life for a Weaver kill. And no, it looks like the Naga managed to get the last hit, and Earthshaker drops the Fissure, but overall, Weaver definitely got the benefit of that trade. He managed to get both experience and got one kill on the Kunkka. So, nicely done for the Weaver. Of course, he's going to get harassed a bit, but he does have nine Magic Wand charges and four Tango. So he should be able to handle himself just fine. We'll see what item goes for. The standard item these days is to get... It's not really the Viv Booster. You can get Lincoln Sphere. Actually, we don't really see uh, Weaver too much in Southeast Asian Dota games anymore. I mean, you know, Omni Knight with that Repel doesn't really have to fear the Barret anymore. So Barret should just really focus on getting the CS. And Omni Knight is doing a nice job in terms of just constantly keeping away as clarities rather than going for the fast Soul Ring. Soul Ring, of course, is such an invaluable item on Omni Knight. You can 
cast that and then get the spam on and with that you can pretty much get all the free CSs you want along with lane harassment but meanwhile there's another engagement looks like Don is going to be in a lot of trouble Shaolin takes the fall once more and the torrent manages to hit the witch doctor but Earthshaker is going to be in a little bit of trouble two wand charges up and Ring of Basilis is going to be up as well the Riptide going to be casted Naga oh Weaver is staying too close and the AoE of the Fissure managed to pick up the kill a mistake by the Weaver uh, should have probably Shakuchi'd out of there, but nice play by the Earthshaker, and he's been involved in all the actions so far, so he's going to be getting a lot of experience, a lot of assist gold, and a lot of hero kill gold as well, so he's going to be able to get himself fast boots, and with that might get a fast dagger, and we can see Omni Knight just really, really hurting this bat in terms of lane, so nice laning by the MSI EVO GT side. And we're going to see the palm. Oh, Kuka's going to get initiated on once more. And this is the constant struggle in the Southeast Asian Filipino match. Uh, just action happening 24 7. Centuards is going to knock Scout out. That is Centuard being dropped by the Badmans. But Naga's going to be a huge amount of trouble. I don't really see her any way of escaping that. But she might be able to bring down the Kunka. Yes, she does. And Earthshaker. Oh, Witch Doctor getting the block on. And Weaver's going to try a lot more passive harassment. Earthshaker, no mana for the Fissure. But a couple more hits from the Shadow Demon. Oh, the. Oh my god, the Weaver does die, and the Tanko TNC managed to get a double kill, which was the freaking other hero that I forgot, <laughs> Shadow Demon. So double kill, but Earthshaker still at level 6 this early on. Very, very highly leveled Earthshaker. And keep in mind, this is not really something you're expecting this early on in the game. Uh, level 6 Earthshaker, that Fissure is going to do over 200 damage with a decent stun. And of course he's going to be able to cast more because he has boots, he has a lot of mana for the clarities, a lot of money for the clarities rather, and he's going to be able to cast more and more. So Earthshaker getting a lot of levels and unfortunately for Kunkka he's died a couple of times. They're going to constantly initiate on this Kunkka. They do not want to let him breathe. Maybe this is the power of Kunkka in the Filipino scene. He just becomes such a deadly carry, but he's definitely going to die at this one hit. Oh yes, the Shikuchi managed to finish off Kimo. Yeah, Kimo the Kunkka on the last hit, and looks like the Swarm's gonna do some residual damage to the Earthshaker. Earthshaker might have to retreat to a safe distance, or might have to fare himself some salves, but Flaming Glass are gonna be casted. Unfortunately for Batrider, the Repel is casted once more, and was there a TP? No, there wasn't a TP, so of course that Flaming Glass does have a 90 second cooldown at level 1, so he's not gonna be able to cast that for quite a while. And unfortunately, the Repel did block all the Firefly damage. So, unfortunately for the Barrow, let's just check out his CS really fast. 30 and 2, so he's firing decently, but meanwhile Omni 25 and 0, and he's also firing, and he's probably out harassing the Batrider as well. Batrider, of course, going for that Bottle Crow, which is not really standard for, bottle, for Batriders in any other lane, but of course, since this is a Filipino match, expect to see Bottle Crowing all up in your biz snatch. Yeah, I said it. You know, Barrett are going to be harassed once more. Let's just check out the farm on the Panda. 38 and 6 on the Panda. And Sand King has 31 and 5. So both here is firing relatively well. Witch Doctor and Naga get chain stunned up. Double going to get stunned forevermore. As the Naga is going to take a lot of damage. Naga is going to take the fall. Witch Doctor taking a lot of damage as well. Sand King teleports in. And now we harass the GTFO out of there. He gets a tango in. Will he Shikuchi out? Yes, he does. And nice job juking. Does get stunned from the Fissure AoE damage. And now he's going to be able to escape the Sand King because he did pick up the boot. Now he's standing for Weaver in the early game, but the boots is really going to help him maneuver, outmaneuver the Sand King. Who could have got the Burst Strike? Of course, no mana for the follow-up epicenter. But right now, the lanes are going in clear favor of the MSI EVO GT squad. 10-6, to 6, 16 kills in 7 minutes. This is what you expect from Filipino Dota. No room to breathe, no room to talk about. And that's why I can sometimes wear on casters. I think that might be a reason why I'm going to stop casting Dota 1 games. Because there weren't any Chinese Dota 1 replay. But still, I will be bringing you all the Dota 1 content you can possibly stomach. So, yeah. Well, I'll still probably bring you mostly Dota 2 replays. But, interesting game. I really want to see Kunkka in, as he's utilized. But unfortunately, Kunkka has just been dying. 1 in 3 has picked up an early earn. And I guess Kunkka is mostly... Mostly... Blech, mostly... Mainly... Put, picked up for his passive trial and harassment, not having to spend any man to get a nice AoE cleave off. And to heroes like Witch Doctor, who have very low base uh, HP, it's going to do a lot of damage that they wouldn't really like to take in a normal situation, especially against a melee hero. You know, Panda has not been doing too much. Of course, he saw Sand King teleport in for the counter gank. But Panda is going to get the bottle charge up. He does have full mana. He's going to be able to drop the clap and the primal split up. So let's see how this goes. Of course, Panda, very, very popular Dota 2 pick as well. And I expect to see him going on the offensive. The Thunderclap completely whiffs. And now he drops the ultimate. 
you dropped it extremely early. You're gonna cast out on the shower demon. He's gonna go on the cook of the boat. Manages to hit absolutely nothing. Actually, I think it hit the witch doctor. But his pen ultimate is expiring very quickly. He's gonna be at full HP when he spawns. But right now, the pen ultimate being pretty much useless in that uh, regard. And now the Sand King teleports in with the epicenter. And the Omni Knight did teleport in. Cast the purification, doing 360 AOE pure damage around the AOE the radius and now Naga is definitely going to die. The torrent is not casted because Naga is going to run to the right and now we see the Sand King Burrow Strike in and double kill picked up by the Omni Knight. So it looks like MSI EVO GT winners of the last GEST showing, hey, we won the last GST. You guys just won the last GMPGL. We proved our mark against uh, all sorts of teams from all over uh, Malaysia and Indonesia and Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, you only have to figure out the Filipino seat. So MSI EVO GT clearly showing their experience, running a very, very counter gank heavy lineup, which is something we don't really see too much. We don't really see uh, too many teams carrying teleport scroll for the Pinoys, but now we see carrot ganking being really nicely employed by the MSI EVO GT. So it'll be interesting to see if they manage to go far in the International 2 qualifier, if they resort to a similar sort of play style. But of course, a lot of the favorite Filipino heroes are not in Dota 2 at the moment. Naga, Templar, Assassin. Uh, Chaos Knight is not in Dota 2 at the moment, although he is going to be released extremely soon at the time of this recording. So now we see Panda being jumped on once more. Panda has just been caught out of position, being pretty much a useless soul catcher, amplifying damage by it ever so much. And now we see the Shadow Demon and the Earthshaker migrate to the top lane, where Batrider has been trying to get some farm. I think he's saving up for a very fast Blink Dagger. Yes, he's going to have it in 100 gold. Let's see if they're going to try to gank him. Meanwhile, Grey dies, who is... I don't know. Let's see, who was Gray again? The Weaver, Weaver died once more, so MSI EVO GT just outclassing the heroes on Badburn. And this is a little bit surprising because Badburn, they have pretty strong early game heroes, Batrider and one of the better ones, but a nice job by MSI EVO GT nicely pairing the Omni Knight against the Batrider. A pretty nice melee hard counter. Most, I think there are very few melee heroes that Batrider can't just completely dominate in lane, but Omni Knight might be the best hero in that regard. So, meanwhile, Naga's going to try to get some farm, but right now you can just see she is having a, a real difficult time. 7 and 3, 1 and 4 in terms of kills and death. Not even has, doesn't even have enough gold to buy boots, so she is being pressed down quite hard. Meanwhile, Weaver has picked up Magic Wand and the Ring of Health, and he's not going to be able to go on the offensive. They've been really trying to kill this Kunkka all out, but he's picked up a core stat. Going to go for that Lothar's Edge rather than the Shadow Blade, as it is called in Dota 2. And with that, he should be able to survive a lot of ganks. Of course, Shadow Blade, of course, is pretty useful in terms of that increased move speed. And we see Bottle Curling by the Omni Knight going on. He's very close to that mechanism. With that, he's just going to become a walking felon with the Arcane Boots. Pretty surprised he didn't pick up a Soul Ring, but hey, I guess it worked out in the end for him anyway. Rather than wasting that 800 gold for the Soul Ring, he's going to be able to pick up a quicker mechanism. And with that, become even more of a deadly force in team fights. You know, disruption is going to be casted. Torrent is going to be chained. No, it's going to whiff this torrent D disruption combination. Not working out whatsoever, but they're going to be able to pick up the Witch Doctor with relative ease. One more slash by the Tidebringer. He picks up a killing spree. So Cook is managing to redeem himself. Net going to be casted on the Shadow Demon. And Shadow Demon dies to the Naga Siren. Let's see Flame Break going to be casted. No, Lasso Mage is latch onto the Kunkka. And the killing spree is all going to go to waste. No, the Repel is going to be casted once more. Panda walks to get immediately torrented. Now he's going to split into the ultimate. Going to kill Omni Knight right off the bat. And the Buckler is not going to do enough. Now Kunkka has to be very careful. Earthshaker staying in the midst, dropping defensive fissures. But that's going to be the end of that engagement. Favoring the uh, Badburn side in that engagement very, very decisively. Which Doctor did die, but they did trade a uh, Omni Knight and... Uh, yeah, Shadow Demon for that, so they're going to take that trade any day of the week. But now, we're going to see Panda get purged, no ultimate, Song of Siren is going to be casted, and now, nice fishing by Naga, always keeping that Song of Siren in range of the Panda, so he's able to teleport out, or rather, in the range of the other heroes on the team. And Barret, of course, has picked up the Blink Dagger, and with that, he's going to become a deadly force in terms of ganking. Level 10, so he's still going to have quite a long cooldown on his swimming last. It goes down to 70, then 50 when you level it up. So, it's not going to be up for another minute, probably. But he still has to be feared quite greatly because his sticky napalm along with the firefly is just going to do a ridiculous amount of early game DPS at this point in the game without the Iron Knight. Iron Knight, of course, being there for ganks, 
doing messed up in terms of always carrying teleport scrolls. Unfortunately, he doesn't have one right now. Maybe he can afford it. He probably he had to buy the mechanism right there and then. And now with the mechanism, it's going to be extremely hard to kill any of the Sentinel heroes. A lot of healing being put down by the Iron Knight. Self destruction is one of the best uh, hero skill, hero saving skills in the game. And Earthshaker dropping defensive fissures. This Earthshaker playing like a champ, 2-0, 5-1. Oh, but it's just always been the action in all of these engagements. Just checking out his assists. 2-0 and 10. 10 assists and 15 kills. This Earthshaker is getting filthy rich. Episode can be channeled on the Panda. I don't know if they'll be able to kill, but looks like the other knight comes in for the reinforcement. But unfortunately, the Panda Claps slows down the Sand King and gets repelled. Can Sand King catch up with another Burrow Strike? But he is repelled. Can Omni Knight cast the... Oh, another clap gonna go down. Anya is gonna be slowed. Panda is escaping by the brick of, t brick of his, uh, by the edge of his teeth. Ah, can't speak today. Meanwhile, a massive engagement happening bottom lane. We saw Kunkka die. We saw Barry teleport in with the flaming lasso. And Shout even died as well. So my bad. I was watching the endless chase of Panda trying to escape the endangered species list. But fortunately, he was killed mercilessly. <sighs> 27 kills in 14 minutes, high octane game, but now we're going to see the power of Barrider with the mid game Blake Dyer. Of course, his teleport scroll was cancelled, so he's just going to have to walk away for a bit. Maybe he's going to pick up a rune, Sand King is going to get there first. And now, let's see how the farm is going to shape out. 57 creep kills for the Kunkka. Meanwhile, Omniite does have 70 creep kills, so he's running quite well. And a nice job by the Filipinos. Uh, usually, when there's high octane ganking matches, they aren't really farming very well at all. But Omniite, of course, has been able to carry teleport scroll, teleport in for the account ganking. And, of course, he's been able to farm extremely well against the Barrider. So. Yeah, meanwhile Kunkka, after dying three times in the start of the game, has picked up 60 CS uh, right off the bat. So he's going to be able to pick off this tower once. Yep, one more slash, going to be able to pick off his Lothar's Edge very, very quickly. And with that, he's going to go on a pretty AoE massive, a massive AoE binge. Uh, don't know what's wrong with you today. Just can't stop speaking badly. Dust of Appearance is going to be popped. Sand King does die. Meanwhile, the mechanism arrived up too little, too late by the Omni Knight. Song of Siren going to be casted once more. Are they going to initiate? They're going to try to barrier Blinks in. Going to drop the Flaming Glass on the Omni Knight, but he does manage to get a repel off. So that's going to disable a lot of magical damage. Gets a purification off. Beautiful play by this Omni Knight. Doa just being a beast in these engages. Barrier Blink Dagger not doing too much, but Shadow is going to be able to pick off. Nonetheless, an Omni Knight does get netted. Repel, of course, does not stop the net. Meanwhile, Naga Siren is by the skin of his teeth, and now Omnite's going to go on the offensive. No, he's not going on the offensive. He's just going to try to slow down people with the level 4, no, level 1 repel. Check out the level of the DJNR. Level 1 DJNR. Cask bounces. He's on two heroes perfectly. Tron going to be casted. Here comes the ship. Going to come in, hit the panda square on the chin. Urshiger drops a fissure, and panda gets completely owned. Nice job, Omnite. Really, really showing his mark in these games, which is pretty surprising. Meanwhile, Sand King Lifts the epicenter, hitting absolutely nothing. And that's a little bit unfortunate, haha. -ha. Being caught out by MSI Evo GT, <laughs> making a little bit of fun of their teammate. All in good fun, especially when it's a uh, teammate flame. Meanwhile, Weaver, being the primary farmer in the challenge, even though they went extremely aggressive, only 4 kills and 53 CS, not even. He's gonna be able to pick up his treads pretty soon, but after that, oh, he's saving up very a high amount of gold. Let's see if he goes for the ultimate orb into the Lincoln Sphere. It's gonna be useful in terms of dispelling the disruption and the X, which is pretty useful in terms of shutting down the Weaver. Or we're gonna see the Radiance being picked up. Sand King does get repelled. More action happening. The net was locking Sand King in place all that time, and Barrett blinked in or with the. F uh, Firefly, but he didn't use his Flaming Lasso. So he's going to be able to bottle up, save that Flaming Lasso for another counter gank. And Bat Rider is just going to become more and more annoying as mid game goes on before the heroes start getting more and more items. Meanwhile, Panda just being extremely ineffective, which is not something we ex expect to see in a Panda in any sort of game. Thunderclap being stopped cancelled as the Lothars is picked up by the Kunkka. Going to be able to splash down these creeps very, very easily. And Panda is just not even, not even level 11. No Blink Dagger, nothing like that, 0 and 3, his ultimate hasn't even been able to get himself any kill. And Panda, if he doesn't get too many kills with the ultimate, the heroes on the enemy team are going to get more and more tank. They're going to be able to do more and more damage, they're going to be able to kill the Panda summons more and more easily. Especially this early in the game, before Panda hits level 1, those summons aren't really too threatening whatsoever. But when he hits level 1, that's when the summons become more and more threatening. As Earthshaker is getting a lot of HP, so... 
I don't expect to see Panda making too big of an impact. Shadow D Demon doesn't have too much HP either, but he does have a disruption to stall for time if Panda initiates on an opponent. Meanwhile, Weaver did pick up the ultimate arm, gonna go for that Lincoln Sphere. Uh, it's gonna be useful in terms of stopping the Burrow Strike, although you can just target on the ground. Yeah, not too many single targeters there. I guess it's mostly just for the X and the disruption. I don't know if Lincoln Sphere may, just uh, straight up BKB would have been more useful here. But Lincoln Sphere is going to provide more mana for Weaver to spam his Shikuchi and the Swarm to really help out his early game DPS when he's not going to be able to pick up any sort of Radiance whatsoever. And it's going to give him some nice stats, so I guess Lincoln Sphere is better than Radiance at this point in the game. Considering the other team has, does still do a lot of damage, so every bit of survival he does count. And you really want enough mana where at this point in the game you're not doing too much damage anyway, even if you do pick up a Relic by the 22 minute mark. And the other heroes are quite tanky, so a Radiance won't do too, too much. And Omni Knight is on the other team with the Mechanism and his heals. And Sentry Wards and Ward's going to be spotted. They're going to try to get a push on this tower. The Ward, of course, is going to spot out some of the vision over here. And spot out any possible TPs in. But of course, the Bad Burn side, completely on the other side of the map. Ogre Axe is going to be picked up. Yes, it is an Axe. It is not a club in this game. <laughs> Ograx is going to be picked up by the Batrider, and BKB Batrider is just going to go to town. What can stop a BKB Batrider? I can tell you what's going to stop. Nothing! And that's why BKB on Batrider is such a devastating tool, especially if you get it this early on. You get an Inflaming Lasso of Firefly. And keep in mind, if you cast a Firefly at the beginning of the engagement, it's going to do a lot of energy, especially if you get some sticky napalm. So it's the full duration of the Firefly if it's casted. Nice initiation on the Omni Knight. Blink Dagger picked up by the Panda as well. Disruption is going to save the Omni Knight's life. He's going to be able to cast a couple of spells. Let's see if he can cast Guardian Angel and cast Purification as well. Repel going to be going on and a lot of the ultimates going to be thrown down. Omni Knight is front of the focus. He's going to die as he casts Repel on himself but now we're seeing the Weaver clean up. Burn our Biobus managed to pick up the Omni Knight but meanwhile Doc kills the Witch Doctor and Tanko takes the fall once more as Antivirus pops up once more as seems to happen in a lot of my games these days, which is unfortunate, and this is in Dota 2, so I can't just fast or rewind the time. So we're just going to have to go with that, as the Sand King's going to blink in. Here comes the Panda, and now the huge comeback by Bearburn. Going to try to take advantage of all this. Looks like, is there any dust going to spot out the Kunkka? He's going to get slowed down, and now we see Red Eyes, the Bat Rider, just doing a immense amount of havoc. And just to expound a bit on my Bat Rider point, or expand a bit on my Batrider point. If you cast a Firefly as you initiate and you, the other heroes uh, stand in the Firefly the whole duration, it does well over 700 damage, or the full duration, not counting any sort of sticky Napalm buffs. So yeah, Batrider just doing a lot of AoE damage, really, really taking it to the MSI EVO GT side. And these days, Batrider in the Dota 1 scene still is very, very popular pick and ban. But when he does get picked, he's sort of picked up in the second phase. He's not really first pick material these days. It was like Naga, TA, uh, Shadow Demon are really the first pick material in these days. You know, I mean, I did get initiated on, survived a long time with that cloak, with the repel, with the purification. And he's going to become really, really annoying as the game goes on. Any natural diffusal blade carriers on the Scourge side. Weaver, of course, the... Um, feedback won't interact well at all, and I'll expect many other heroes to pick up Diffusal Blade, so that Repel will just be extremely annoying. But well, fortunately for uh, the Bad Burn side, they do have the Naga and Snare to go through BKB for 4 or 5 seconds, so that's going to be extremely important. And of course it does go through Repel because they're basically the same thing. So I'm just going to pause for a bit and take a drink of water, as this game, 36 kills in 22 minutes all over the place and there's no real cl clear victor of course MSI EVO GT did have a huge advantage early on in the game but ever since Barry picked up the blink dagger since Panda picked up the blink dagger as well he's become extremely relevant he's been able to get a lot of kills looks like initiation is going to go on nobody I guess that was an illusion or Barrett blinked out in the nick of time and now MSI EVO GT, GT want to take this bottom tier 2 tower try to secure themselves some nice Roshan advantage uh, this bottom tier 2 tower and this middle tier 2 tower are very important in terms of securing the Roshan Avenge if you're on the Sentinel slash the Radiant side of the map. But the penalty should be up on cooldown. I think this tower might take the fall anyway. Omni Knight, double damage, it's not going to get the last hit. Glyph is going to be popped, but that's going to not do too much as the Kunkka managed to pick up the last hit. Looks like Badburn is going to retreat to a safe distance, content to farm a bit on their Weaver. He's going to be able to pick up his Lingit Sphere in about a couple of seconds. Yep, he should get the recipe right now, and with that, Weaver is going to come extremely annoying to kill.
So, Bad Burn, although they are down in terms of uh, hero kills and tower kills, they're not out of this whatsoever. If the game goes late, I think I might have to favor the Bad Burn sign just because they have Weaver and Naga. And Bad Rider, of course, goes through BKB, so Kunkka probably the hardest carry on the MSI EVO GT side. If he picks up BKB, Bad Rider can just pop it and just go in on him all day long. Meanwhile, <laughs> Doc manages to pick up a kill on Red Eye, adding the mega kill streak as Sand King gets a huge bounty of gold, Blink Dagger, and very close to his Aghanim Scepter already. So Sand King firing ridiculously well. In fact, he's going to pick up the Aghanim Scepter in about 60 gold, and that's going to be pretty good. Not really in terms of damage, of course, the two pulses always help, uh, but really going to help reduce the cooldown. So he's going to be able to go into team fights much, much more often. Now it's going to be casting on the Kunkka. There's Centaur just barely scouting out the Kunkka. A bit unfortunate. Going to cast the boat to give him some damage reduction. Urshaker teleports in, but he did get maledict. Death Ward, he should die nonetheless. And Death Ward going to be channeled on the Kunkka. Meanwhile, yes, Urshaker is going to die to maledict. But he does drop an Echo Sim, killing the Naga Siren in revenge for his fallen comrade. Kunkka! Tide Hunter would say. This word Dota 2. Panda blinks in and looks like Omni Knight is going to help the Shadow Demon out. Shadow Demon caught out completely out of position. Panda's going to drop the ultimate. I expect Shadow Demon to take the fall. Let's see if they're going to continue for the Omni Knight. It's going to cast the Guardian Angel, but the Cyclone is going to help dispel a bit of that and going to really render the Omni Knight incapable of doing anything for six seconds. Sand King teleports in. Going to get Sentry Ward's going to be dropped. Once more, Dust going to be dropped. They're going to pick up the Shadow Demon. Sand King is going to have to reach out with the Aghanim Scepter. Unfortunately, the pulses didn't hit too much. Here comes Baron. They're going to blink in. Going to try to cast some hero spells. Yes, the Centaur just barely in range to catch out the Sand King. But unfortunately, Baron not doing too much. Aghanim Scepter just giving so much effective HP. And Omni just being extremely annoying to deal with. One more hit. Sand King. Epis Sandstorm's out. And here comes the chase for the Omni Knight. The chasing side on the Bad Bird is really, really <laughs> killing it. MSI Evo GT, Repel gonna be dropped, and Omni Knight should be fine as Kunkka comes in for the reinforcement. Can't drop a boat. No, Drunken Haze gonna cast it on the panda. A couple more hits. Earthshaker managed to pick up the Batrider. Unexpected, or er, Weaver, and a nice bit of counter ganging. Unfortunately, the tower was destroyed by Red Eyes. The Batrider is gonna get out of there. So at the very least, they got three hero kills and a tower. I think they lost four for that. A decent trade. Epic gonna be called out by the MSI Evo GT side as. Huge amounts of action happening all over the place. Naga just ridiculously ineffective. No tank items of any description. 2 and 7, 28 CS. Nice, nice choice by the Bad Burn side to give her some farm. Whew. Action heavy game. Could get good and go for that Battle Fury. Meanwhile, Earthshaker, does he have a Blink Dagger? He does have the Blink Dagger, so Blink and Epicenter is going to be really, really effective. Shadow Demon. Not too many items, but he's always been able to get in the engagements, dropping wards all over the place, dropping his entry wards, scout out that weaver. And let's just check out the overall hero, gold, and creep score screen. We see Sand King and Kunkka leading the way for the Sentinel side with over 100 CS respectively. Meanwhile, a bit more even farm distribution on the Scourge side. Uh, Barret are only hero on their side with over 100 CS has picked up the BKB, and with that, it's going to become a huge swing in favor of the Bad Burn side. Because when you blink in with a Barret and the Panda Ultimate with your uh, to reinforce, what can you do? You're going to get at least one kill on the hero that Barret is going to blink into. And with the BKB up and Panda Ultimate, of course, just really, really devastating for us in the mid game. So despite me saying that Panda Ultimate wouldn't be too effective, he's been able to get a good amount of fire, picked up a Blink Dagger. And now he's, we're really seeing the power of those ultimates. He's still dying a decent amount, but at least he's been able to pick up a hero kill here and there, and he's been able to get 8 assists nonetheless. Meanwhile, the group, the MSI EVO GT side are going to group up. Necrobook level 2 picked up by the Omni Knight, going to be really useful in terms of scaling out the Weaver. They're go going to go for some Roshan positioning, maybe some mind games, hoping that there is a bad burn ward there to scout him out, so they sh can initiate and get a team fight going. And the thing about it is, I was going to go back to this point with Sand King. Pan Ultimate is very, very long in terms of cooldown. Meanwhile, Boat is not very long in terms of cooldown whatsoever. I think it's 70 seconds at level 16. And with the Epicenter, it's going to be 80 seconds for the Epicenter. So, giant team fights can be taken by the MSI EVO GT much more frequently than giant team fights can be taken by Bad Burn. So, even if Bad Burn wins a team fight, MSI EVO GT can just reinforce, have their ultimates all up with the Epicenter and the Boat. And they can be able to push down and get some more map control that way. And if they win a team fight, even with the spammable ultimates, relatively speaking, then all the better. As Torrent can be cast, Fisher can. Let's see if the Barrett can cast his 
BKB no you gets bursted down unfortunate for red eyes as tower is gonna fall very very back and forth I can't really say who has the advantage whatsoever but it looks like there's gonna be somebody's got to teleport back to defend this top tower no I think they realize okay the creep is coming in and we have the tower at nearly full HP we can defend we can go on the high ground for a bit Barry going to be dead for about 40 seconds. Tori going to hit the pan node. They're not going to initiate, just doing some passive harassment. Meanwhile, Weaver is going to go in without fear, with that Lincoln Sphere on his head. And in terms of defending the towers, you have the Witch Doctor cast, which is extremely annoying. Going to disable the crease for 5 seconds and bounce to heroes. You have the Ra Naga Riptide. You have Weaver just being really annoying. So not really in terms of mass burst damage, in terms of clearing down creep plays, but just overcoming the push with the sheer annoying spells. Meanwhile, Cook has picked up the battle fairy. It looks like the skirt side, they want to go for a Roshan kill. They have Naga Illusions to tank up a bit. Naga's picked up Bracers, realizing, okay, I'm not going to get any farm whatsoever. Let's just get some HP, survive some more of the team fights. Hey, let's cast from time, maybe one or two more times. And that's really all I can be useful for at this point in the game. <sighs> After that drink of water, let's go back into the second part of this game. The Sunly Heroes are positioning, but I think this Roshan is going to take the fall. It's at very low HP. Can the Scourge burst it down? Yes, they're going to be able to get the Aegis. They're going to put it on the Weaver. Weaver, of course, I don't know if it's the best choice in this situation because he's not doing too much damage anyway. Blinking by the Panda. Here comes the Baron. Can you cast a BKB? Cast your BKB. He cast a BKB on the Omni Knight. He gets uh, repelled and all that jazz. But, of course, the BKB does go through, or the Flame Lasso goes does go through the repel. Disruption is saving the Omni Knight's life for a bit of time. Meanwhile, it looks like the the hero kills are even, but Beobos, the Weaver, just being really annoying, completely negating what I said about Weaver getting the Age of the Immortal. And now we see Kunkka is going to be in a lot of trouble. Here comes the Sand King to reinforce, going to scare away the Naga with some Burrow Strikes and Epicenters. And now we see Urshir bring in with the Epicenter. Going to be a little bit too little too late. He might be able to pick up the Panda, but Drunken Haze is going to be really annoying in terms of stopping that. And Naga Sleep just going to slow down the Kunkka in his tracks. Meanwhile, Panda's going to get torrented. X nicely done by the Kunkka. Going to get the urn for the kill. And Doc manages to pick up the Inma who was the Naga. So four heroes died on the side of the Badburn. Rather, five heroes died if you count the ages. So Badburn taking that fight very, very successfully. MSI Uo GT, yeah. And they still have pretty good map control, even though they lost the ages. Kunkka is just becoming a beast. He's going to pick up another Battle Fury. <laughs> going to give him some more cleaving action. This is, this is a build you see in public games. Normally, Kukas, in this case, like to go for the Crystals for more of a burst damage splash. But Battle Fury is going to help him clear down Koopa. He's going to get him some farm. And if he is going go to go going to be the only primary late game carry on the side of MSI Evo GT, then you really need all the farm you can get. So Battle Fury, not the worst decision in the world. But, you know, there are other decisions as well. Meanwhile, just sloppy initiations for the Badburn side. Pen Ultimate not doing too much whatsoever. So now we're seeing the effectiveness start to win. They're not able to kill Omni Knight in initial uh, volley of skills. He's just very tank with that cloak with the Necro Book giving some HP and Flaying Glass. So they don't have too much physical damage to speak of. Naga, no farm whatsoever. Weaver, no plus damage items whatsoever. Just a lot of magical damage. And if Omni Knight manages to catch the repel, you can Flaying Lasso him, you can instare him. But you won't be able to do too much damage without any sort of physical damage whatsoever. Meanwhile, Weaver has picked up the Relic, so he's going to pick up the Raid. It's going to give him some nice uh, bonus damage with the Gemini attack. And of course, Weaver surviving a lot of these battles. The residual damage of the Raid is just going to be extremely important in terms of doing a lot of AoE damage to the side of MSI Evo GT. But level 16 quickly approaching for the Earthshaker, and that Echo Slave is just going to do a huge amount of damage. So they're going to have to watch out for that. Meanwhile, Witch Doctor and Nara not even close. So a lot of advantage clearly in favor of SI Evo GT. Kunkka has not been able to pick up any sort of items. 1400 gold in the bank. Might be able to pick up Perseverance or Broadsword extremely quickly. Or maybe that's for a second Lothar's Edge. Who knows? No, it's going to be for a second Battle Fury. As the... So MSI Evo GT recognizing, okay, we have Spam Ultimate. So unfortunately for them, the Panda Ultimate is up, so may they miss time. It. May they just want to go in anyway without any sort of fear of the Panda Ultimate recognizing, hey, Panda Ultimate's not doing too much or too much against us. Let's just keep going in, which is an appropriate strategy in Dota. 
just keep going in if you're a Filipino player. If you're a Chinese player, it's just stay the heck back. Don't risk too much of anything. And we're definitely seeing Chinese employ that strategy to Dota 2 as well. Going for support 4, support 1 in the case of DK for burning. Uh, LGD versus Ehome on the Luminous channel. Gonna show the display of Chinese farming, just massive positioning. But enough about that, here comes a team fight. Bo is gonna catch two heroes, catching the Witch Doctor as well. But the Panda Blinks in. Uh, Nomni Knight is gonna get Flaming Acid once again, but again, not doing any damage. But they're gonna chain disable him down. Nicely done by Bad Burn. Sand King Episode gonna be able to pick up the Witch Doctor. And now Omni Knight being removed from the battle for this whole duration. Beautiful team fight being taken by Bad Burn. Nicely done, just constantly keeping the Omni disabled. Flaying Lasso for 4 seconds, and Snare gonna hold him in place so he can get the Flaying Lasso. And then cast the Cyclone when the uh, Repel gets cooled down. So, f Cyclone for 6 seconds, Flaying Lasso for 4 seconds, and if you just focus everybody else and drop the uh, crowd controlling spells on the Omni Knight, then the Pen Ultimates and the Barrier to Firefly Edge, and the Weaver with the Raid's just gonna do ever so much damage. And even though the boat Mitch hit 2 heroes, and you got that. Uh, extra damage buff for your teammates, or reduced damage buff for your teammates. Still not enough. We see a teleport out by the Shadow Demon, recognizing, okay, I can't help this out. Barrowed Ultimate should be up anyway. It does have 50 second cooldown at level four, level 16. And with that, they're going to pick up this bottom tier 1 tower. And if they can remove this tower as well, it could really prevent a lot of access points to the Roshan. So... Momentum swinging all over the place. First MSI Evo GT looked like they had it, but now Badburn with on the back of that fantastic team fight, where very few heroes did die. Only the Witch Doctor, I think, died for them. And now Weaver is going to pick up the Ogre Axe, going to go for a BKB. Um, I don't think he really needs it. Maybe he's just going to want the Ogre Axe for some more HP. But this is the famous uh, Filipino build, <laughs> Lincoln's here into BKB. A uh, little overkill. If I have to say so, I think they'd really like a lot more physical damage to help burst on the Omni Knight even more. So you don't have to cast multiple Cyclones and AoE, uh, or crowd control spells on him. Well, MSI Eva GT, they recognize, okay, we're not as late as the other guys, let's just keep pushing. Hopefully Pen Ultimate, yes, Pen Ultimate will be down for a while. So, now is MSI Evo GT's chance, Omni Knight did not... Cast his Guardian Angel in that team fight, so they have more ultimates to spare. Meanwhile, Panda without that ultimate is not going to be too effective. Has the drums and the Vlad, but let's see how what Weaver decides to do. He's going to push the lane a bit and then teleport back. But all the while, the Pen ultimate is cooling down rather rapidly. It will be up for the next team. Maybe MSI Evo G team may, waited a little bit too long. Here comes the initiation and Stern cast on the Kunkka. The boat complete whiffing everything, just going to give his team some damage buff but it will be up in 70 seconds, and since the boat lifted it, I think they're going to back off a bit. But here comes Weaver on the offensive, he's going to cast the swarm, going to do a lot of damage. Barret puts it with the flaming lasso, BKB's up, so he can't get to sail. They're going to try to burst down the Omni Knight, Guardian Angel being popped, as well as Repel, but of course that Death Ward goes through BKB, does physical slash chaos damage, and MSI Evo GT managed to pick off the Witch Doctor in exchange for the Omni Knight, a trade that Bad Run will take any day of the week, and now Earthshaker is going to be the next one to fall. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon's gonna have to retreat the heck out of there. He's gonna die. Yes, and now Kunkka is in a lot of trouble. Bad Burn just cleaning up, recognizing, okay, we have better luck him. We'll turtle it out for a bit. Wait for our better team fight alternates, even if they're not as spammable. And with that, MSI Evo GT just gonna have to retreat very, very quickly. And with that. Hmm. Haha. -ha. A little bit. I don't know if that was sort of a taunting hop, huh? probably just like, I think this is a land tournament, the GMPGL, so they're probably all friends here. I don't really know how to focus on the hop for, for, it, for a bit. Uh, pretty, not the best casting if I ever said so myself, but, hey, it's Filipino Dota, very high uh, octane, very, very high action game, so, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the game, nonetheless, 62 kills in 37 minutes. Barely any time for me to catch my breath whatsoever. You know, just checking out the farm. Farm is not going to be too important. Now it's just coming down to hero kills. It was 30 to 22 in favor of the MSI Evo GT squad, and now it's uh, 2 and 8 since MSI Evo GT has taken that advantage. And more towers being picked up for the Badburn side. Badburn really showing their composure, saying, hey, I mean, you may have won the last GST, but you have to face all sorts of styles. Maybe you're just not good at fighting Filipino teams one on one. And we did win the last GMPGL. 
We're gonna take it to you. Koga has picked up the second battle fairy. I really don't like this choice. I mean, it doesn't give him any sort of tanking advantage, which he really needs. It's just gonna give him a lot of damage. So, it's gonna help him clear creep waves extremely quickly. If he picks up a third battle fury, then I'll just, I'll just sort of laugh depressingly to myself. Dust gonna be casted, they're gonna get the net on the Kunkka, and no BKB disruption is gonna be helping that. And here comes the BKB by the Weaver, they're gonna be able to pick up the Kunkka. Here comes the Bolt, completely whiffing everything, just gonna give Kunkka that buff for a bit. And Shadow is gonna be the first one to fall. Bad boss is wicked sick at the moment. Monster kill, picks up a kill. Here comes Sand King with the Epicenter, but Weaver just time lapses out. The Epicenter doing nothing, absolutely nothing, just gonna slow down Barrier through his BKB. And Panda Split is up, it's gonna be casted. It's not gonna be do too too much except kill the Omni Knight, which is pretty important. Bad Burn just making a huge momentous comeback, and now we see the Naga sleep in. Gonna kill the Sand King, complete team wipe. Bayabas picks up an ultra kill weaver with that BKB, which wasn't even really too necessary in my opinion. Just completely running all over the MSI EVO GT squad. With that, I don't really see too much of a way for MSI EVO GT to come back, but Maybe they can come back on the back of Omni Knight just not getting out of position and being the first one to focus. Omni Knight has just been out of position. He managed to play a fantastic early mid-game part, but ever since then, he's just been caught out of position time and time again, always in range of the Barret of Flaming Lasso. And with that, he can follow up with the Panda Cyclone and just really, really disable him down. So it's not over just yet, but if the second Rex is taken by the Badman side, it might be over for MSI EVO GT. We are just doing a lot of damage. With that ultra kill, he's going to have even more golden bank. And with that, he's going to definitely pick up a damage item. If he picks up something like uh, Drums of Endurance, then I'll be very, very confused. Shadow Demon's going to die once more. Our Shaker blinks in with the Echo Slam. Very, very missed time. No, here comes the boat. Going to hit three heroes. Here comes a giant splash by the Kunkka. Weaver does time lapse out of the way. Going to BKB TP out. Nice play by the Weaver. Nice bit of AoE chainstone, but it might be a little bit too little too late. They're going to try to go for the Roshan. They're going to try to chase the Barrier. Barrier just blinks out. Two years down for the MSI Evil GT squad. Witch Doctor does have buyback. Naga should have buyback as well. So they can't even go for the Roshan very aggressively whatsoever. Barrier pops to BKB. is going to fire fly out. Has four step. A lot of mobility on this Barrier. Should not die in any sort of engagement. Has no mana, but he's going to be able to retreat back to base and get full mana. Yeah, he's just going to TP out. So, the double damage rune is up. MSI EVO GT, they might be able to capitalize with the Roshan, but all their waves are pushed. Kunkka, unfortunately for him, the double bat fury does give him a lot of cleaving power, and just checking out the Weaver Gold really, really fast. 2300 Golden Bank after the Demon Edge. He's going to be able to pick up the MKB extremely soon. And with that, Weaver is just going to become even more of a nuisance than he is. And Weaver, although he does take a while to get going, if once he does get going, he's just extremely difficult to stop. Very, very momentum-based carry, more so than any other hero. If you get him down, he becomes pretty much useless. But if you get enough free farm space, if enough hero kills, if you don't focus him in team fight, uh, which you can't really afford to do because the cost are going your army knight, so you can't really just focus down your weaver. There's just so much chaos happening in the form of Bat Rider and the Panda Ultimates and the Naga Illusions. Meanwhile, Sleep being casted by the Naga, but it's not going to hit anything. And Masai Evo GT is going to have to back the heck out of there. Gem being picked up by the Omni going to be able to scout. And did he cast Riptide for Vision? I think he might have casted a Riptide for Vision. Hmm, interesting interaction. Did not notice that before. But yeah, ever since Sand King picked up the Aghanim Scepter, Masai Evo GT have not picked win, been winning any team fight. Not on the fall of the Sand King. Just on the fall of their just Omni Knight being caught in position over and over again. And this is the fault of Omni Knight, when you give a hero so much farm, if, if he's caught out of position, your team is just going to suffer immensely. Meanwhile, Kuga, with that, on the back of that farm, has picked up a crystal, it's going to give him a lot of damage, but it's still pretty squishy in terms of overall HP. And there's a lot of ways to counter a repel. You have the Naga ultimate, you have the Naga, you have the Instead by the Naga, you have the Flaming Lasso by the Barret, you have the Death Ward by the Witch Doctor, and you have the Physical DPS by the Weaver, who has an Aegis of Immortal to boot, and the BKB along with Lincoln Sphere. Should not die in any sort of situation. So let's see how MSI Evo GT defends this final stand. Can they defend? 
it's all going to come down to this next team fight. Kunkka is going to cleave out. You saw the huge range that that splash did. Man, that was pretty ridiculous. Necrobook 2 casted already by Doa. Necrobook 3, rather. So it's not going to be up for the next team fight. So maybe that was just dissuasion. But if they just wait out 30 seconds, Necrobook's not going to be up for another minute. Or rather, 50 seconds. Because it does have an 80 second cooldown, I do believe. Yes, 80 second cooldown. Meanwhile, the Riptide is going to help clear down the Kufi, so they're just going to wait out the duration of the Necrobook. Nope, Panda picks up the kill, but Panda pretty tanky, but here comes Earthshaker with a huge blink initiation, followed up by his Epicenter going to get two kills right off the bat. Huge plays by MSI EVO GT right off the bat, and now Naga and Weaver are going to have to back tech out. But unfortunately, MSI EVO GT's base, they're going to get sieged on. Oh no. Meanwhile, Witch Doctor does die, but the base, base is in a lot of trouble. Can MSI Evo GT hold out and make a huge comeback? Earthshaker just showing his worth. You saw the power of a high level Earthshaker. Even though he caught a couple heroes, that Echo Slam still did enough damage. And more importantly, positioned for the Kunkka Boat Torrent to follow up. So, nice team fight by MSI Evo GT, but they're going to need to have three, at least three more team fights like that in order for them to get a couple of wrecks and even up this game. But Earthshaker, huge amount of farm, just being very, very ill and valuable. Clearly the MVP for MSI EVO GT. Are under so yeah, Bad Burn cannot take the team fight capabilities of MSI EVO GT lightly whatsoever. The Echo Slam will be up in about 40 seconds, and 40 seconds is enough time for the MSI EVO GT squad to push out the lanes. Of course, on the back of that double battle fury, I want to see the critical strike by this Kunkka. I'm going to stay keeping a close watch on this Kunkka. No, they're going to back off. Come on, let's see a critical strike, bro. A player's forces are under attack. 670 with Tidebringer double the Fury. So, not the biggest crit ever, but... It's alright, it's alright. And he's going to be able to pick up a Parisa. And now I don't think even Bidak would help him and Saeva GT, so I'd just rather go items all the way, all out, and just try to get as buff as possible for the next team fight. Meanwhile, Weaver, still MKB, 1700 gold in the bank. Barrider picked up a Diffusal Blade. Nice call by the Barrider, going to help immensely in terms of dispelling that repel, even though they have so many anti-BKB measures. Um, Diffusal Blade will just really, really be useful. I mean, what else can I say? It's going to just follow the repel, going to give you that purge, help slow down, and of course that <laughs> is going to do some uh, bit of feedback damage to, to reduce some of the mana, which is clearly the least important thing at this point in the game, considering Batrider attacks very slowly, and heroes have huge mana pools at this point in the game. But Kunkka just cleaving down creep, creep ways very, very quickly. MSI Evil GT going to try to defend against this incoming Bad Burn push. No, looks like Bad Burn, they want to farm a bit more, may get AC up on the Panda. He's pretty far away from the AC unless he has items in the base. Does he have items in the base? He does, so he's going to be able to pick up the AC. And with that, the damage buff, or the reduced armor buff, even when Panda goes into the power split, it's going to be applied to the team and the uh, tower. So AC, pretty good call by the Panda in this situation. Just stacking as many auras as possible. Blads, drums... Uh, AC, huge amount of ours for the Panda. You know, MSI UOGT clearing these creepways in the blink of an eye. But let's see how Bad Burn copes with this. Can they get the next team fight? I still think they have the clear advantage. Just on the back of their superior farm, support Naga with the Zero Awards. How the mighty have fallen for the Naga. Which doctor picks up a Ghost Scepter, so he's going to be able to survive a couple more physical attacks. But it's not the physical attacks you have to worry about, it's the massive magical damage output by the Sand King, Urshaker, and the Kunkka. That would be really, really devastating. Meanwhile, Weaver just got to farm up, clearing the creep blades extremely easily.